So I think this is the earliest publication. It's from a show called 1969. Maybe you should hold it up to the... Uh... Anyway, this is a show I did in 1991. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't really money from the gallery to do a catalog, so I thought I could do it at the copy shop and just make 100 copies. But also, and you can see I did everything in my typewriter. So I just did everything in my typewriter. I Xeroxed the pictures, I sequenced it, brought it to the copy shop. But I wanted something in 1991 that looked like it was from 1969. And it does. Thanks. Oh, honey. So really it wasn't thanks. So really it was a matter of doing something that seemed like it fit with the show because all of the works were from 1969. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's this um, aesthetic that uh, Buckler is, is talking about about conceptualism that uh, everyday uh, office aesthetic. Somehow. Maybe. Uh, the idea was to do it inexpensively, uh, but in the show there was a vitrine, and I changed it every week with materials that I'd collected from when I was a teenager, which would be 1969, so that's the New York Times. And then Walk on the Moon. And so things that were in the vitrine became a kind of visual introduction. And that's a little collage. This is not it's gonna take too long. A collage that I made. So that's from Vietnam. That's the black and white ball. Um, obviously drugs. LSD. Um, So for people who, a record don't, album. who will watch that and, and don't know you, you're a curator, but so are you a curator? Yeah, and a writer. Yes. And a writer, yes. And so there's a special way of making an exhibition here that is very autobiographical, isn't it? Well, uh, you know, art criticism, if it isn't just reviews and your opinion, is... Uh, a form of autobiography. You know, Oscar Wilde said that originally. It's interesting too to think about a story about the campus in Berkeley, California, because this could be a headline from one month ago mm -hmm. after the election, you see. It's all coming back around. And then here rock festival and then protesters against the Vietnam War having some sort of you know the idea that if they're entertained and they're they're on drugs and some you know they're, they're not going to cause trouble and I don't think people realize that part of rock and drug culture was to sort of control younger people uh, what else is in here so when you're doing that is that ah. In your head, is there somewhere the idea of making uh, self publishing that would look like a zine, or is it more like uh, I don't think I heard the word zine in 1991, yeah. I didn't know what that meant. Mm -hmm. it, was, but it was, and also user. out of conceptual art, there were things like the Xerox book, which was actually printed. You know, the Seth Siegel of Xerox book wasn't Xerox because mm -hmm. it would have cost yes, more money, they yeah, also yeah, printed <laughs> an essay on liberation, Herbert Marcuse. So a book from them, Easy Rider, movie. Uh, this was again putting an image from like a rock festival and a, a protest against the war. So they have mud on their bodies and face and that's blood. But in black and white and putting them together it has a sort of equivalence. Uh, you know something I remember from when I was young 
issue of Life magazine, and they reproduced pictures of everyone who was killed in one week. Well, not everyone, just Americans. So are there photos of the, the works exhibited in the, in the exhibition? These things were in the vitrines. Like okay. The, are they actually like a record or newspaper article or a copy of Life magazine? It's funny also how things came back, because here, this is from the movie by Emile D'Antonio, you know, Make War Not Love, which then another generation knew very well as a cover of the Smiths record, which said, Meet is Murder. Same thing. Uh, Bonnie and Clyde, the movie, which is actually from 68. This really looked good on the video. Really? Yeah, it's <laughs> cool. And then, and then you have the actual catalog. So Vito Acconci, Richard Archibald, that's what I was wondering. Robert Barry, <laughs> Larry Clark, Dan Graham. What is this work with Dan Graham? Uh, he had shares as if he was a company and you would be buying stock in the artist. Ten dollars per share. He did I don't think he sold any of them. <laughs> Um, Hans Hoppe, Eva Hesse, Douglas Hubler, and Sarah Jasper Johns. Everyone knows the painting of the flag, but the lead relief is much more gnarly and much more wow. heavy. Yeah. On Kawara. Nice. Anyway, so that was. That was the, f the 19, first publication. 1991. Mm -hmm. And then... Oh, and it's all white uh, cover. The page yeah. you showed is the, the first page yeah. of the cover. This is from a show in San Francisco. Oops. Where's the title? Oh, yeah. 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 So this was in 94. It's more or less a similar idea. All, it's almost like a, every artist has a page. Well, this is, see this is horizontal, it's not going to pick up things up. Uh, and you know, the, well, maybe that was kind of Christopher Woe. was um, a gallery in San Francisco. They didn't have money for a catalog, so I did a very similar publication. So that's 94. Yeah. So then, really nothing till 2000, I mean, in the interim I had a lot of shows that actually had catalogs that were produced by galleries and museums, but then White Columns uh, does a big annual show, and I organized that show seven, six, seven years ago, and uh, we made this small publication, because, did you talk to Matthew Higgs for your project? But, uh, because White should. Columns has been doing these things, the WC. Mm -hmm. So they had already, look, they had already done 32 publications mm -hmm. by the time I did this, and this is already seven years ago. Okay. Um, and it always looks like this. Uh, for can you turn the, uh, this vertically? Because I don't think it's really oh, catching oh, a lot of the yeah. images. Yes, but people watch uh, horizontally. <laughs> well, Alright, but I mean, it's kind of silly because then you're seeing that and... What if you put it like this? <laughs> okay. So, this had all sorts of things for fun. I mean, that's not me. 
but that was a poster for a talk I gave. Uh, that is me. Oh, this is actually in Paris. That's Musée de la Chasse. Mm. Which, uh... Oh, wow. That actually looks pretty funny. Um, and then... Oh, this is interesting, too. This is a piece by Justin Matherly. If you please let us... This this was the first work you saw when you went in mm -hmm. to the show. If you please let us put a little order in these revels. Measures required even in the depths of infamy and delirium. It's, it's uh, the song. So this is just an illustrated checklist, which I think is a great thing to do for a cheap catalog. You can see everything. You have all the information. Um... But that, mm, there is still a very uh, particular personal way of, uh, of doing this. Uh, yeah, like I mean, here I felt like my complete list of exhibitions had never been published. Mm -hmm. uh, all the shows from 84, so that's, look at this, that's what that, that's what that is. That's all the shows since 84. And then that's from me, see that's not me. Charlie Brown, you know Charlie Brown. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, that's me. Like Buzz from Melvin's. Melvin's group right now. So one of the reasons I wanted to ask you some questions about since is the, the other exhibition that you did at White Columns uh, quite recently, which I missed and I was uh, very disappointed because it seemed like there was a great deal of uh, printed material that was shown there. Yeah, one of the reasons I did that show was to really put forward the idea that writing about art, publishing books, catalog zines, all of that's important because more and more it's all about the art market and money and it seems that things like uh, writing, criticism, art magazines are just irrelevant. So I thought I'm just going to put it all out there and say well this is all the writing and publishing and everything I've been doing for 30 years and it amounts to something and it means something. Um, uh, you know this was the time to put that forward. So it was your art category? Not exactly. I mean, I know that now the idea of an archive is a really big subject with uh, curators and artists, yeah. young <laughs> people who will become art historians and so on. Can I just this? No, I'm, I'm thinking that they were all things that you were uh, involved no, thing, in. Yeah, but that's different from an archive. An archive mm -hmm. is not something I would show in public, really. Mm -hmm. uh, So, then, oh, I was going to give this to you, but I just got some honey on it. Look, there's better. Yeah, there's a stain there. Uh. So, this is 2010. Just after that, uh, I had this idea that once a year I would rewrite a book that I liked mm -hmm. and uh, or that I had a problem with. So this is the autobiography of Paul Bowles. Uh, his book is called Without Stopping, mm -hmm. but he uses the word suddenly mm -hmm. a lot to begin a sentence. It's a terrible, it's a really annoying thing. So I changed the title of the book from Without Stopping to Suddenly Without Stopping. And then also, he's a terrible name dropper. It's all about him and who he met and so... Like, in other words, he's a person who met so many interesting people in his life. You would think that his book would be full of all sorts of encounters and insights with those people. But no, he makes every single thing be about him. So, what I decided to do was completely rewrite the book. And I took all of the best parts and funny parts and put them in and all of the really, some of the most uh, intense parts where he's just really talking about himself and 
uh, I emphasize those. And the cover, these are actually, these are all the pages I excerpted from throughout mm. the book. So I rewrote the book, and I did 30 copies. But I still have some of these. If you want this... No, wait, I don't think I have copies. I don't have extra copies then, I'm sorry. Uh, after I did that, this is also 2010. Uh, you probably know this. Locus Solus, Rainy mm -hmm. Herself. So, uh, so I rewrote Locus Solus, which actually seems like something that Roussel might have done to rewrite someone else's book. See, look, as told to, he told me the story. But in, in Locus Solus, there's so many fantastic things that happen and so many incredible machines, and you don't know how they... Okay, but Roussel creates this incredible world, but then he explains every single thing about it and shatters the illusion. So I rewrote the book and I took all the explanations out and I kind of put the magic back, <laughs> I think. And I also, did 30, I also did 30 copies. I have a few of these. You can have, you have oh, number yeah. 30 of them. Nice. These okay. I don't have, but you can have that. Great. Thank you. And then the first... The first big book I did with white columns, I call this scrapbook. So it's... Me looking back on everything over that period. Uh, and actually some of the stuff in here is sort of archived, but, um, you know, I think when people look back, they tend to put forward all of their bigger moments. And I thought that this book should include things like reviews I got for shows that were really negative, bad reviews. So like a lot of the things that you might hide, I decided to put out. Um, and so Matthew Higgs, the director of White Columns, interviewed me. There's it's a long interview. Look, there I was, five years old. I guess the book. Yeah. <laughs> I know, what happened? So then there's this piece of writing, and then it starts, you know, this is 1984, it's the first time a show of mine got a mention that's in the Village Voice, or Smith. You see, I was really working directly from my typewriter. That's a press release from a show, one of the earliest shows, that's the show. Uh, that's my interview with Andy Warhol. It's one of the last interviews he did before he died. So, I mean, you can have a look. There's all sorts of things there uh, in order. Mm. My first big show in France in Dijon, the consortium. So, for example, this is something I would have just written and given to friends. It was never published. I mean, later it was published, but at the time, no. And that's also interesting. You never see published. It's not changed much, but me kind of rewriting a piece while I'm still, I mean, putting it out and working on it. Uh, this is, yeah, this is me planning a show here, working it out, and then what I find really interesting is I made a drawing for, if you can see that, uh, for what the plan of the show would be, and then later when the show was photographed, I mean, you can see I basically did exactly what I planned to do. <laughs> Um, that's where the first scene came out of that 69 show. 
second big show at the Consortium in Dijon. 68, that's a po from a poster from 68. So Tora that's the La poster? Roma. Well, it's based on a poster. Okay, it's yes, the painting from the poster. Okay. I mean, it's, I don't know. I can sort of see that I'm working on things. So this one was published by White, white Colors. Yeah. And how many of them did they make? I you... think a hundred. Yeah. See, that's the other zine that I showed you from yeah. the show in San Francisco. Postcards I was sent by Felix Gonzalez Torres, front and back. Oh, that was a show at uh, Juice Again, which is now Gallery Patrick's Again. That was a show I did of uh, artists working with. The furniture of Jean Prouvé and Charlotte Perrion, and I just we just did in Paris the 20th anniversary mm -hmm. of that show past summer. I don't know if you know about him. I, I love Guillaume. So you see, this is <laughs> He's uh, a very good friend of mine. Well, this is something I wrote to him. He had questions for me, and I remember exactly where I wrote this. I wrote this at the Doheny uh, Motel or Hotel in Los Angeles. That's 1995. He's, he's amazing. Oh, I know him for a long time. I haven't seen him in a long time. I used to hand write out all of my calendars, mm -hmm. and what's interesting is you can see more or less all the people I'm meeting, mm -hmm. the bands I'm going to see, the movies I'm going to see, uh, and I have all my hand done calendars, I don't know, like 20 years or 25, I mean now I, I have regular calendars. See that look, opening of photo show and tour. That was a show I did in Brussels that traveled to tour. Um, uh, Dan Graham, uh, Christoph here, that's Christoph Scherix. Uh, what else? What else? I went to see the band Royal Trucks and I interviewed them. Uh, what else is here? Wolfgang Tillmans. This is going to Baltimore to interview John Waters. Uh, Bruce Hanley. Oh, I went to see Beck, this little club in Hoboken. Anyway, it's a. F even the calendars become kind of an mm -hmm. archive unto themselves. Uh, letters to friends that were not meant to be published. Or... Oh, that was my book that the, the Press du Real published. Mm -hmm. What's this one? A little one. This is from 2012. A Child's Guide to Good and Evil. Uh, this was a very good friend of mine, a uh, musician, artist, and he was in a band with uh, a good friend uh, of his, and two of them, and he killed himself, and so the person, the woman he was in the band with and I worked on this show, uh, um, which was all of the videos that he made, music What's, videos. I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name. Well, I didn't see it. Oh. <laughs> it's there. <laughs> And the band was called Orphan. And so this is his artwork and photos, and I don't remember how, we didn't do very many, but it was really to give out, give out to all of the artists who participated in the show. So it's kind of like a real zine that you think about. Yeah, it really uh, looks. Because these are sort of like Xerox catalogs. This was quite a production. Mm -hmm. Yes, serves up. Um, I had a class at New York University, 
I know. If I, I know. knew, I would have taken it. <laughs> oh, anyway, was the, the first it was. Show you did it. It was about um, artists who disappear, artists who stop working, and mm -hmm. I, I wanted to have a project for the whole class, so we did this aesthetics of disappearance. It says volume one, number one. There was never a volume two or a volume three. It's also oh, that's all the what the I same? did. Yeah, it's the yeah. same, but I wanted to do different covers. Oh. So this first cover, you don't recognize who that is. It's Howard Hughes. Okay. Uh, I think he's 14. He was already brilliant. He made a motorized bicycle at 14. That's brilliant. That's, that's <laughs> Howard Hughes. But he's someone who really disappeared. Now, I don't know if you recognize who this is. But it's Patty Hearst. Mm -hmm. These are her arrest photos. Um, it's 1975. And then uh, we did a third cover, <laughs> Collect Them All. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, uh, this is Paul Tech, and his, the sculpture became known as the Dead Hippie. And then the last one, and if you recognize who that is, who's the great person who disappears in front of the whole public eye? It's Greta Garbo. And what's inside? Uh, all the different projects by the students in the class. And uh, we did we did 100 and it sold out right away. And we did a second printing of 100 and that also sold out. Um, yeah, I know all of them. They were my class. My class oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, I just saw today at the Pettibone show Joseph Inhauser. Oh, yeah. I was with him Saturday night. And then uh, on Sunday, I'm going to. I don't know, see some shows with Gary Webb. Mm -hmm. And I see different people around, like, uh, oh, I'm trying to think who, who else do I see around? Uh, yeah, you have names here, if you. <laughs> um, I used to see David Flauger, Sam McInnes, and Mary Shaw, mm -hmm. team. Oh, I'm going to see her next week. Who? Uh, David. Um, Who? Uh, Alice. Alice Paul. I saw a oh. uh, drawing by her. Yeah, this. Nice. So you only teach. That time at the at the at the Yeah. Yeah. And then this you know. This one I know. And so so it's very pretty much an artist book uh, made by you. No, I consider this uh, visual criticism. Okay. Tell me about this. Well, you know, this was kind of the height of all of the. Uh, People speculating on younger artists and buying works and then immediately putting them in auction. Let me just go back to the cover. So the one auction house that was uh, selling mostly younger artists was Phillips. Mm -hmm. And when people were buying and selling very quickly, they said that they would flip the artwork. So I was able to change Phillips into flips. <laughs> and, uh, you know, also I was saying, oh, that's a mask by Paul McCarthy so it was easy because the ear would cover the eye and the eye but I was basically saying that people who pretended to be collectors were buying art and then reselling it were basically pigs <laughs> so pigs. that's why it's not visual <laughs> criticism okay. and uh, I don't remember how many we did we did a lot of them but you know a lot of them were sold a lot of them were given away uh, I subsequently did, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 copies that had a lot of hand drawing and hand stamping and all sorts of things so that Ryan could sell them at the book fairs for a little more money. Mm -hmm. So have you done, was it the only time you did this kind of... It's uh, the only time I did yeah. it and I'll never do it again. Yeah. 
because you had something to say and you could only say it this way. I was angry. Yeah, I yeah. was angry and I had this sort of energy around this anger and uh, I just thought, and also, you know, you have in here uh, certainly some artists I respect and things I like, but I just thought it's all fair game uh, if I'm going to, because I wasn't, it seems like I'm criticizing the artist and sometimes I guess I'm it's a little bit mean and I am criticizing the artist, but I'm really criticizing the whole, that whole side of the art market, which just uses younger artists in their work and um, turns it into money and then throws them away, throws the artist, throws the art away and they throw the artist away. So I'm criticizing the system. Auctions, these people who call themselves collectors who don't collect. Yeah, flips. Yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, I know that. You do? <laughs> did you get one I'm, of these? No. Oh, well these really went fast. I did a show at Anton Kern, um, 2015, mm -hmm. and uh, this of course you know that's the very yeah, famous... Yeah, that's what it was. I mean there's different versions of this chart, but By, uh, I... Alfred Bach? Yeah, but I decided that I would redo it and and so, like, that's my coming out of conceptualism, as you might have said earlier, uh, from Buko Dandies and Office Managers. Uh, relational aesthetics becomes relational ethics because I think there's so much unethical behavior. I don't like post internet art, so I, that became post internet. Uh, I, at one point, because I thought of this less oh, yeah, in terms of. Zombie formalism. Yeah, I, <laughs> vampire conceptual. Uh, I thought more about like the art cartoons and satires of Ad Reinhardt. So at one point I didn't know what to put in this one box, so I just wrote this space available. It's exact. I mean, it's exactly what the Reinhardt would, would say. No, I'm just copying him. In a, in a Your sense. own ism in that box. Yeah. Now the thing too is I did this long conversation with myself, mm -hmm. and, and Charles but I but I wrote it as if I was yeah. It's CB, so of course it's Charles Baudelaire. Mm -hmm. And was you know that, of course, that's in France. Yeah, of course, that the Let's Go uh, Caves. Um, um, no, I think these oh, are the other caves. It must be here. Oh, I don't remember. I think it's the other ones. They're older. Oh, okay, here, look at this. Accent? So was and there a specific uh, occasion for this? Yeah, I did a show at Anton Kern. But okay. also, there had been... A, sh a painting show at MoMA, mm -hmm. uh, and I really disliked it. So the publication came out of, mm -hmm. again, taking a kind of negative energy and turning it into something else. Um, where is it? See, now that's the very famous... It's Alfred Barr in front of things of Devin Young. You probably know the jam. No. So there's no checklist, so it's just a conversation then. Yeah. But And I talk about Napoleon in Egypt. Um, oh yeah, the show at MoMA was the Forever Now. So this publication is called Forever Nevermore. Uh, there's, of course, Napoleon in Egypt. you know this Mark Tanzi painting it's called Purity Test and it's the Great Salt Lake so there's the Spiral Jetty of Rolex Smithson okay. but he's saying Mark Tanzi saying the Spiral Jetty was always there because these are Native Americans <laughs> anyway um, so 
so this was also white columns. Uh, I had a project from 2016 to 2015. I bought one painting a year or one artwork a year by Richard Aldrich. Mm -hmm. And I told him that at the end of 10 years, I would have 10 works. I would keep them together. I would show them and I'd make a small publication. So this is all of the works I bought from him over 10 years' time. 10 works, 10 more so. And then he wrote a little note about each work. And we did 100 copies. And then is that the last one? Yeah, and then this brings us up to date with... Is that the more recent? Yeah, this was the show of White Combs of all my books and catalogs. Yes. And works for my collection. This image was done by Wayne Gonzalez. Uh, so that's actually a book of mine mm -hmm. that this African statue is reading. <laughs> the African statue is uh, a photograph by Wal Walker Evans mm -hmm. uh, from the late 1930s. That's a work in my collection. And I commissioned six or seven artists to make posters, and Wayne made this poster where the African sculpture was reading one of my books. So this is, from the beginning, a complete bibliography. And also, I wrote the whole thing in about two weeks. I just took all the books off my shelf one after another, and more or less wrote in a very direct, first-hand, first-draft way my impressions of what it was to think back on those books, those shows, those points in time. Uh, so it's a whole history of my publishing of 30 years. Which is now, happily, already a little out of date since last winter because I'm, you know, doing like a book or catalog every couple of months. So this kind of very first person writing is also what you would find in a zine, like some people sharing their experience. Well, or... for me, when you look back uh, on what you've done, it really, uh, I mean, it's not academic, it's not really a text. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's almost like the voice in your head. Mm -hmm. So you want to share that and preserve that. And uh, so it's kind of like memoir in that respect. If it has a literary equivalent, that's, that's what it would be close to. Because I'm not someone that's already I'm not someone who's ever going to write a memoir. So mm -hmm. I've done that book, which is the scrapbook. Mm -hmm. I've done this book, which is the bibliography. Mm -hmm. And in between them, I didn't bring it here. It's a real book. It's not a scene. I did a book of all of my exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And that's written so, in a very first-person direct kind of memoir way. And I think I'm done because, you know, there's the scrapbook, there's all the book of all the shows, and now the book of all the books. There's not really any books to do that brings things together over, from over time. So, you know, there's the scrapbook. Oh, this I didn't bring. I forgot about that. And White Combs also published that. And there's the recep oh, sorry. That's the book of all my shows. But I mean that's already yeah. out of date because it ended that book was six years ago. And those are the serves up. Yeah. Yeah. And this is funny, this is catalog. Sorry, Johnny Jetzer did Where's in now at the Swiss Institute for John Armleder, but it was done in a very, very informal, cheap way. So it's it's like a zine. It's not a catalog. It's not a hardcover. It's not uh, on nice paper. It's, I mean, they did it very in a very yeah, modest, modest this, way. They're Swiss, so they can't help making very nice graphic design. <laughs> oh, I don't know if it's that nice. <laughs> so that's that. 
Then there's an ad by uh, Forum at the end? Uh, that's not my choice. But, uh, I don't know why that's not. No. Anyway, uh, and that's my last book. You've seen that. Anyway, um, I think I can give you this also. I think I have a few copies. Perfect. So, yeah. Thank you so much. And you're welcome.